About 10 years ago, Russia's venerable fleet of rockets commanded nearly half of the global share of the commercial launch market. Since then, the emergence of other players, most notably SpaceX, has considerably shrunk the once dominant Russian position. In 2017, although Russia made 17 successful orbital launches, only about a third of them have flown for paying customers other than the Russian government or the International Space Station. By contrast, SpaceX has made 16 launches, 11 of which have been for commercial customers. SpaceX projections for futures suggest that disparity will continue to grow if the company continues to increase the flight rate of the Falcon 9 rocket. Recognizing its dimming market position, the Russian rocket corporation Inertia has fast-tracked the development of a new medium-class launch vehicle they call the Soyuz 5. This rocket could replace the existing Soyuz rocket that carries cosmonauts and astronauts into space while competing for SpaceX commercial payloads. According to the Russian space reporter Anatoly Zak, Russian officials had high hopes for the launch vehicle. Even more importantly, the Kremlin saw the new generation vehicle as the Russian response to the American challenge on the commercial launch market, making the work on the Soyuz 5 booster especially urgent, Zak writes. Pitifully, six years passed, and Russia spent nearly a billion dollars on developing the new Soyuz 5 rocket, but Soyuz 5 still has not left the ground. More seriously, Kazakhstan's recent seizure of Russian space assets threatens the Soyuz 5 rocket. This is the endgame for Soyuz 5. Let's find out more in today's episode of Alpha Tech. The Soviet Union created the Baikonur Cosmodrome in 1955 to serve as a test site for intercontinental ballistic missiles. A few years later, it became the world's first spaceport with the launch of the historic Sputnik 1 and Vostok 1 missions. The sprawling Cosmodrome was a mainstay of the Soviet space program. After the breakup of the Soviet Union, Russia leased the spaceport from the government of Kazakhstan and currently has an agreement to use the facility through the year 2050. In 2011, when the U.S. mothballed its space shuttle program, the Russian Soyuz rocket and the Baikonur became the only way to send manned missions to the ISS. Russia pays an annual lease fee of about $100 million. Neither country is particularly happy with the relationship. The Kazakh government feels it's undercompensated and the Russian government would like it to be in its own country, which is why Russia has attempted to replace its dependence on the Baikonur Cosmodrome for manned rocket launches by constructing the Vostokny Cosmodrome in the far eastern Amur region near the Chinese border since 2012. However, that project's been marred by allegations of corruption, with dozens of individuals involved in the planning and construction of the facility arrested on embezzlement and fraud charges in recent years. Despite some of that uneasiness, however, the two governments have been working together on future space projects. For example, the main Russian space corporation, Roscosmos, has been developing new medium-lift rockets that anticipate launching from Baikonur. This is the Soyuz 5 vehicle, a three-stage rocket powered by RD-171 engines that will burn kerosene fuel. Russia is counting on this vehicle to replace its aging Proton-M rocket and more cost-competitive with commercial rockets like the SpaceX Falcon 9 booster. Russia plans to launch the Soyuz 5 rocket from the Baterek launch pad at Baikonur and intended to initiate preliminary construction on the site in 2022. But those plans now face significant uncertainty. In August of 2022, Moosin met with Roscosmos General Director Yuri Borisov, after which it was announced that the Baterek project, the first test for the Soyuz 5, would be pushed out to 2024. Kazakh media report that the Borisov had harsh words with Musin over the delay. Musin allegedly called the criticism a diplomatic miscalculation. KZ24 editorialized about the incident, suggesting that Musin was trying to drive a wedge between Kazakh President Tokayev and Putin. The actions of officials can turn into a serious blow to the entire bilateral space and research program. There's still no replacement for Baikonur, which has a unique geographical location and there never will be. In addition, earlier this month, the Kazakh news site KZ24 reports that the Republic of Kazakhstan has seized the property of Tsinki, the Center for the Utilization of Ground-Based Space Infrastructure in Kazakhstan. The firm, which is a subsidiary of Roscosmos, is responsible for launch pads and ground support equipment for the Russian Space Corporation. According to the report, which was translated for ours by Rob Mitchell, Tsinki is barred from removing any assets or materials from Kazakhstan. 
a ban on utilizing resources and conducting financial operations, as well as instability in negotiating positions as a whole, are slowing down the priority direction of the work at Bagnor, namely the construction of a new launch pad for the Soyuz 5 booster, the report states. Russia has already spent nearly a billion dollars on the development of the new Soyuz 5 rocket and plans for its launch site and ground services. When Ars wrote about the rocket's development in 2017, it was slated to debut in 2021, but now it's unlikely to debut before at least 2024. And given the current dispute with Kazakhstan, it'll likely be delayed much longer into the future. There's some interesting and complicated politics at play between the two countries. Kazakhstan has nominally been a sovereign nation since 1991, but in the last three decades it's maintained close ties to Russia and lies well within the Russo-political sphere. However, Russia's invasion of the Ukraine appears to have changed the calculus of the relationship, namely Kazakhstan's president, Kasim Yomar Tokayev. He apparently sees Russia's preoccupation with Ukraine as a window of opportunity to assert greater autonomy for Kazakhstan. Russia, for its part, has pushed back on further autonomy for Kazakhstan. Weakening ties with the large country to its south could lead to a further crumbling of the Russian Federation. At times, the rhetoric has grown heated. For example, former Russian President Dmitry Medvedev has called Kazakhstan an artificial state, and on the Russian social media site Vakontakte, he accused the neighboring country of planning genocide against ethnic Russians in Kazakhstan. It appears to be good politics for Kazakh officials to stand up to this bluster. The dispute over Tsinki's assets in Kazakhstan has been spearheaded by Kazakh communication minister Bagdat Musin, who sees political value in asserting the independence from Russia. Musin has said his government needed to seize the assets in part because of a lack of communication with the chief of Roscosmos, Yuri Borisov. Borisov, who prefers to keep a low profile and at least in his public dealings with NASA, has struck an apolitical posture. He's so far not commented on the dispute, nor has Roscosmos said anything on its Telegram channel, which now effectively acts as their primary public outreach tool. In short, the Soyuz 5 will certainly never be able to compete with the SpaceX Falcon 9. When its future remains uncertain, the SpaceX broomstick just shifts into higher gear with up to two launches within more than four hours. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget, share your ideas in the comments section below. Your support motivates us to create more quality video. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.